guys, how's it going? Today we are gonna be pruning and fertilizing the roses in our rose garden that we just planted up last spring. We have 60 roses planted in this space. I had planned for 87, but I spaced my rows a little too close. So about six feet from the center of each plant. Aaron tried to warn me, he's always good about planning for enough space, but in my mind when I was planning out this area it was right when i was looking at all the rose catalogs and it was when we were in kind of spring order mode and you guys know how that gets i mean i wanted all the varieties and so i was determined to fit as many as i could in this space which hindsight i probably would eliminate one maybe two rows so there was enough space but i'm really happy with the production of this this area already we had so many blooms last year Oh, it's exciting and it's all color blocked. We've got pink in the first two rows, apricot in the next two, and then yellow shades in these two rows. You can see we didn't make it as far. I think there's room for 12 altogether in the long runs. And then this row here is white skewing cream. And then in the last row, we have half purple and half uh, red. I majored on the colors that I really love to use in arrangements. And you know, we have talked about since these roses are so young, we could dig them up at this point and reposition and get more space. We've thought about doing them in a different pattern, but I kind of like to have them in rows because they are part of our cut flower garden, which everything's rows out here. And I kind of like that tidy feel. And two, I wanted to think of these roses as cut flower production, not as an addition to the landscape. And if I would have done this in more of a formal design, I don't know. I mean, maybe I wouldn't care about cutting blooms because there would be so many, but I feel like I would be more hesitant to cut blooms if they were part of a larger design. But as an overall backed up look here, we've got this quadrant here is mostly uh, annual production. Then of course we've got the roses here. Back quadrant, I am working toward making that all perennial. And then that fourth quadrant is usually dahlias, um, zinnias, I've got a few rhubarb plants in there. I'm gonna do more vegetable production in there this year. Anyway, let's walk through the steps on how I like to prune our roses. I did do one so you could see what the end result will hopefully look like on most of these. We have a distant drums right here. And when I pruned it, it looked more like this one right here or any of the ones surrounding it. It was about two to three times as big and really full, but what we're looking for in the end is a very tidy, cleaned up area, free of leaf debris, with branches that have room to expand. Uh, there's room for a lot of light and airflow, especially through the center of this plant. What we end up with is usually kind of a vase shape uh, in the end. And these are the tools I'm gonna be using. We've got the kneeling pad, the Felcos, my rose gloves, and a pop-up bag. So let's go slow on this rose and I'll go through all the steps. First one is to cut your rose back to about the height you want it to be. And it will depend on how old your rose is, what kind of structure it has underneath. These are all baby roses planted last spring. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of new growth low in the plant and there isn't really big thick trunks. So in my case, you can see this rose is about this tall. I'm gonna probably guess it's gonna end up somewhere right around in this range. So if you top your rows like that, even if you're not doing any thinning cuts or anything like that, you're at least eliminating the bulk so you can get in closer to the inner workings of your plant. When I am making these cuts, it may not be the last cut I make on that uh, branch. Once I can get in there and see better, I might cut it down further, uh, but I do try to cut it above a bud that's pointing in the right direction. Let me get you a close up on that. So let's take this branch for example. It's actually growing in an area where I think I'm gonna to wanna to keep it. So you wanna look at all the buds. See, they're all growing in different directions here. You wanna choose one that's growing out away from the center of your plant. This one is cruising right back in because wherever you make that cut, if I make my cut right above this bud, the new branch is gonna grow in the direction I want it to. If I made my cut above this one, the new branch would grow right to the middle of the plant and congest it, which we don't want. So I would go in and make my cut just above that bud just like that. Okay, so let's get step one done and get this rose debulked. That one's coming from the neighbor rose. I don't want that. See how much easier it is to work around this plant now? Here's an overhead look at it. The growth that we just took off was basically from this space here. I didn't even bother with this stuff because a lot of it's coming from real wispy growth that I'm not gonna wanna save anyway. So it wouldn't be worth it to go along and cut all these itty bitty stems when I know we're gonna be doing 
one of these on it. I think I'm gonna take that whole thing out. So you can eliminate it without it taking a whole bunch of time. Step number two is to cut out anything that's diseased, damaged, or dead. So you're looking for dead branches, which I saw on another plant, like this. So you can see it's a completely different color than the other rose canes. Uh, they're usually brown to black, maybe a little bit red, and they look corky and kind of sunken. So we're gonna go in, we don't wanna save those. Those come out. Also, any branches that have been broken, anything that's crisscrossing and you need to you know, eliminate at least one of those. And then diseased canes, you can usually tell what a diseased cane looks like. They'll have big dark lesions, like dark spots, maybe even like burgundy colored spots. I don't know all the different uh, problem diseases with roses, just a handful of them. We don't typically have a lot of that issue here. We might get canker, um, which you can see on the canes, like they're the, the burgundy colored lesions, but we don't deal with a lot of other things. So anyway, you'd wanna cut anything that looks sick out of your plant. You want nice, vibrant green canes. And in our case, that's what we've got. This whole plant is full of good looking uh, growth here. I don't see any issues, no diseases, nothing broken, nothing dead. So that step's pretty much done with this one. And step number three is to thin it out. So in the end, you want what we just looked at. You want stems that have a lot of room to breathe, a lot of room to grow, which might end up being, you know, five, six, seven, eight canes. Depends on the age and the, you know, the size of your rose. This one's kind of wild. I mean, it's got growth going all different directions. But you can see the stronger canes in here. Those are the ones I want to major on. And then I want to get rid of anything growing low and wispy. I'm even, I think I've got my, yeah, my kneeling mats on one that was laying on the ground. So with that sort of thing, I'll go in and make my cut all the way down at the base of the plant. Yeah, that one needs to come out too. Okay, so I'm going to try to capture this process as best as I can, but all of this stuff's coming out, all the wispy stuff, and then anything that's cruising through the interior, we want to make sure that it's a nice open area. And there you have it. Doesn't that look better? Now we just need to do that a whole bunch more times. <laughs> and the sun is coming out. I am so thankful for that. Oh. pruning part and they look so nice. This looks like a different space with them all cut back. Most of them I went down way further than I thought I was going to initially, but when I got in there, 
they're such immature grozes at this point anyway that I really wanted to cut them back hard and give them a really good, I don't know, just leave some really good structural pieces in there and let them fill back in. There were a couple like this one though. That's just a really nicely shaped plant. This one's called Heavenly Scent and oh my gosh, they are fragrant. There were also a couple that just were almost all the way dead. One of them just had one cane that was still alive. Like this one right here, most of the stems that it had were black. They had no life to them, but this one stem had a little bud on it. So anyway, we'll just see how it goes. A couple of things that I did not mention before is that the roses in this space are hybrid tea, grandiflora, floribunda, primarily. I think that's, I think that's what we have in here. Uh, I do not trim climbing roses or really landscape and shrub roses the same way. Landscape shrub roses, sometimes I'll go in and do a full clean out and really prune them back, but those you really don't have to do that with unless there's dead canes or like a really long arm that you wanna cut off. Those are great to cut out, but that's one of the beauties of planting that type of rose in your garden is that they don't need this type of treatment every year. And then climbing roses are a whole thing. We've done videos about it. I still need to do uh, prune back my colettes on the arborist by the raised bed garden and I'll show you when I do that. And the other thing was uh, removing leaf debris away from the base of the plant, which you can see I did do. I picked up the bigger piles and then just scooted the rest out of the way so that we could get our fertilizer right around the plant today. And we'll come along. It just got so breezy. I didn't know if it'd be worth it to do some raking. It's kind of still right now. Anyway, I'm going to get the fertilizing done next. Let me show you what we're using. Okay, right here. We've got rose tone. I'm actually going to pour it into this bucket because I think I can be a little bit more precise with my application here. And we are just going to follow the directions on the back of the bag, which I think it's one and a quarter cup. Uh, established plants, which I would consider ours are not brand, brand new, but single plants, you sprinkle one and a quarter cup around the drip line of each plant. They have a little picture of the drip line and water thoroughly. I'm not gonna do the water thoroughly step today because we are supposed to get rain this week and I think that will help work it down. The bag also says to feed monthly from the beginning of the growing season until September. Mine do not ever get that much fertilizer. They're lucky to get their first spring application and then we might come along sometime mid-season and fertilize them again and that's typically what our roses get. This part shouldn't take any time at all. And I'm just going to sprinkle roughly one and a quarter cup around this plant. Probably a little extra. That's all right. We're just going to do that same thing 59 more times. And I'm walking through just trying to remind myself of all the different varieties out here because there are so many. Woo, that breeze is a little chilly. And I'm trying to decide which one was my favorite. I don't know that I could actually pick, but I did really enjoy the um, Heavenly Scent, the Fun in the Sun variety. Um, boy, April Love was beautiful, Honey Sweet. Gosh. They're all pretty, all of them. And that is gonna be it for today's project. Let me tell you what, I was looking forward to this day all winter. I, a lot of plants, I don't mind what they look like in the winter, but roses, they always look a little bit rough. So I just kind of tried to side eye this area all winter long and not really look at it. And now I can look at it and feel peace about it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope the audio is okay. I'd never know with many days like this. Hope you guys are having a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye.